We've received a lot of comments to make a video about the Chinese artificial sun, and we researched it, but we couldn't find anything legit. But now we see some new comments to make a video about the American artificial sun. We also researched this, but we couldn't find anything real. But we found something cool. We realized that the Americans are doing some cool stuff with the sunlight. And that is why we did our homework. And in this video, we want to explain it to you guys. Sometimes parts of the earth get extremely hot. Is there any way we could actually turn down the heat from the sun? Scientists have done a lot of research and are still doing research and they believe that yes, we can actually adjust the heat. As you know, the sun has been working for billions of years and it's gonna continue working. So how can we actually turn down the heat in some parts of earth? One of the best things that actually combats heat on Earth is clouds. And you've probably seen how fast the heat disappears when the clouds show up. Something that's the opposite of clouds is greenhouse gases. And instead of reflecting the heat up, they absorb the heat and keep it down. And that causes the surface to get hotter and hotter. Professor David Keith from Harvard University is one of the scientists that's actually working on this problem. He believes that Mount Pinatubo, a volcano in the Philippines that erupted in 1991, the ash, smoke and gas that was produced made that area decrease in temperature about half a degree centigrade. Scientists realized that the ash, gas and smoke that was in space back then caused the sun to reflect up. So it basically acted like a mirror. Instead of absorbing it, it reflected it off. And this caused that little part of Earth to get a little bit colder. It is at that moment that one field blows up around the world, and that's solar geoengineering, which basically means engineering the sun. Or in simple terms, scientists have to realize how to control the heat of the sun. They have some different methods to do this. One of this is this, SAI, stratospheric aerosol injection. You could say what they're trying to do with this is the same thing that happened in 1991 with the volcano in the Philippines. If you didn't know, stratosphere is the layer where the ozone layer sits and it's about 20 to 50 kilometers. And solar geoengineers say we can spread sulfate in this layer that would act like a mirror in space. And that means the heat of the sun will be reflected rather than absorbed. The research that was done by the scientists showed us that the sulfate could stay up there for about a year. And after a year, they would have to redo. So why don't they do this for hot places? Because they haven't reached the technology to actually do this properly. They can do it, but it will take plenty of time. Like if you want to lower the temperature of the Sahara Desert, you would have to spray sulfate in the stratosphere for tens of years. And the math that they did showed us that if you want to bring the temperature of the Sahara Desert down by one degree centigrade, you would have to pay $18 billion a year to do this. That's a lot of money. But scientists believe that this is worth it because in 2022 alone, around the world, there was $210 billion worth of damages just because of climate change. And this project could help out a ton. But not all scientists agree on this subject. And a lot of them believe that this is completely wrong. They believe it will make the weather worse. It will damage the ozone layer and it will raise the chances of acid rain. Geoengineers believe that if you actually do this, you could mess up the entire ecosystem of planet Earth. Like a place like India where it rains a lot could all of a sudden turn dry out of nowhere. 
You might say, if we dry out India, it doesn't matter, who cares? But when India actually dries out, it will affect the entire Earth's weather. India is like another Amazon rainforest, and it's an extremely important part of planet Earth. Other scientists say that this could be used as a weapon. Like if they want to mess up a country's weather, go spray sulfate in the stratosphere and just let it dry out. But we can't lose hope. This idea is still useful if it's done properly and it could be used around the world. And that is why a lot of countries and different parts of the world are trying to invest in this project. But let us go inside the ocean. You probably know that 70% of the planet is water and most of it is ocean. So that means most of the planet is dark blue and that's why it absorbs the sunlight rather than reflect it. And light colors reflect more rather than absorb the light. Another idea solar geoengineers have is that to create a lot of bubbles in the ocean and basically create foam and that turns the dark blue water into white water and the water would be like a mirror rather than an absorbent. One of the main people that's talking about this idea is this guy, Dr. Corey Gabriel, a professor in the University of San Diego. One of Dr. Gabriel's idea is that to put an attachment on ships that creates foam as they sail along. But it seems like other scientists are not a fan of this idea and some even made fun of him for it. And they believe that however much foam you create, it will disappear in a few seconds and it doesn't even matter anymore. And it's not like the sulfate in the stratosphere where it can stay there for a year. And obviously you can't spray chemicals in the oceans because you might damage the marine life. They even say this method might dry out the nearby cities of the ocean and that would be because of the lack of rainfall there. After all these research that was done by these genius professors, they haven't figured it out and they realize one thing, that you can't mess with weather because it's no joke. Because if you mess with it in the wrong way, it could end you. Another cool idea that these scientists came up with is to cool down cities around the world. It's good to know that New York City is 12 degrees centigrade hotter than the outside environment. And that's a huge difference. And the main reason is the lack of nature and so much buildings, roads, cars that all absorb this hot sun. One of the easiest way to cool down a city like New York, you could paint the roofs white. That's it. It's that simple. A light color versus a dark color is a huge difference. Like when you touch a white car in the sun, it's hot, but it doesn't burn you. But if you touch a black car in the sun, it will burn you very bad. And sometimes it gets so hot that you could literally cook eggs. From 2009 forward, most of Manhattan's roof was painted white. If you measured the temperature of a black roof in the summer, it was about 76 degrees centigrade. But when they painted it white, it went down to 48 degrees centigrade. So if you paint all the roofs white in a city, it might help the entire city cool down a little bit. If you look at old Greek cities by the Mediterranean, all the buildings are painted white and the only reason for that is to keep that city cool. There was a lot of theories about how we can change the climate for the better and we told you most of them. But most scientists that work on the solar geoengineering projects all are afraid of the weather. Most of them do not want to actually attempt their theories because they're worried it could actually mess up the entire Earth's climate. But research has not stopped and it continues day by day. So that means we might see some results. We might find a way 
to cool down extremely hot places and make them a paradise. Or not, we might do the exact opposite. Professor Keith from Harvard University says, we will not stop researching, but that doesn't mean we're gonna actually attempt these ideas we come up with. We have to learn how the world works, how nature works, and know its history until we actually make up our mind on what to do. This is the only thing that all the geoengineers agree on, and that means the research should continue. I think one day we'll get some results. What do you guys think?